Steve McQueen is back in the director's chair, but this time on television, even though this is basically a full-length movie, let's talk about Mangrove. What is up, Flick fans? Welcome back to my channel. The Small Axe Anthology got started yesterday. This review is a day late, but I was actually able to watch this movie a bit early. I call it a movie. It's not technically a movie in terms of Oscar eligibility, but there are some standout and just knockout performances in this film, and I can't wait to talk about it. Leave your comments down below. Are you going to watch the entirety of the Small Axe Anthology? Five episodes, I believe, every single week. They may skip a week or two, but I'll keep you guys updated. I will try to cover all of them, and let's get into it. So Mangrove tells the true story of the Mangrove Nine who clashed with London police in 1970. The trial that followed was the first judicial acknowledgement of behavior motivated by racial hatred within the Metropolitan Police. So to start off, I like the fact that this is in London. I don't like that things like this happened in London, but we're normally getting a lot of American perspectives, and that's okay. Something like the trial of Chicago 7 Still my favorite movie of the year, I thought was fantastic in the way that it portrayed and displayed all of these things, but Mangrove is a very different movie. This is much more straightforward, not as stylistic as Sorkin's Trial of the Chicago 7, even though there are so many similarities and comparisons that I can draw to the actual courtroom scenes, because within both movies, you have a judge who just kind of refuses to acknowledge that a lot of this is racially motivated. A judge that is blind uh, to the reason that they are there in the first place, and the frustration uh, with our nine characters in this movie that are going up against the system, essentially, as well as the frustration within the audience that we are having to sit there and sit through this entire thing and say, this is ridiculous. Why are they there in the first place? Well, they are there because throughout the first half of the film, Sean Parks plays a character by the name of Frank who is just trying to run a business, who is just trying to own a restaurant. Uh, now, again, all of this comes from the perspective that the movie gives us. So acknowledging that this is a true story is one thing, but I am talking about the specific narrative of the story right now. It's just constant, it's consistent, it's kind of ridiculous, and at a point, how is a guy supposed to run a business when all of these racially-fueled attacks continue to happen against his business? Uh, so, it escalates, it goes to trial, and the second half of the film, much more straightforward, much more dialogue-driven, whereas the first half was um, kind of built up through the cinematography, built up um, through these soft and subtle moments with our characters, we get some crazy, and again, using the word Oscar, uh, Oscar-esque moments with our characters in the second half, standing up for themselves in court. Another performance, Sean Parks, obviously, as Frank, is outstanding. Uh, some extremely emotional scenes that I felt every second of. But another performance, Letitia Wright, who we know in Black Panther. Uh, maybe our future Black Panthers, according on what route they go there, but uh, that is not just Shuri, okay? This is a big-time actor, and I saw what I think she will continue to give us on the big screen in this film, and if this was a movie that had the opportunity of getting an Oscar nomination, I think she'd be nominated absolutely, as I believe Sean Parks could be nominated, as I believe the writing here could be nominated, because the dialogue is so authentic and awesome, and uh, those kind of on the side of our nine individuals who are standing up for themselves in court, that back and forth kind of behind the scenes, and then when they go in front of the judge and just these police officers sitting there, you know, kind of snarling and, and having the attitude back, we didn't do anything. And they even say at one point, if we were to lie about this, how could you as a public, as a jury, trust us? Us, having watched the first half of the film, we can't help but to get frustrated, but it's necessary frustration that I think Steve McQueen brings out of us as an audience. So it is a wonderfully executed movie. I think the direction is crisp. The writing is great. Um, I tend to be more of a fan, just personally, of the, the more stylistic movies. So films that maybe have quicker pacing, that are edited, and I hate to say it like this, a more interesting way, but the movie was definitely interesting for what it was. So I could have used a bit of that in the second half, uh, and I could have used some Steve McQueenisms that I don't think we get. It is strictly off of the dialogue. Um, so there were moments that I think 
may be slow for the likings of certain audience members, but I, I can't bash this movie too hard because it's just so expertly written. Uh, it's a great film. It really is, and it is a booming, it's a rousing start to this small acts anthology that I hope you guys are checking out on Amazon Prime. Uh, the first one dropped this weekend, and as for my score, it's an 82% for Mangrove. Just a really, really well-written piece of work, and um, I, I love things that are fueled through the dialogue. That's definitely what this is. Uh, not the craziest technical movie you'll ever see, uh, but man, Steve McQueen, he is just a fantastic writer, a fantastic director, and I appreciate you guys for watching. So let me know all your thoughts down below. How'd you feel about Mangrove? Uh, did you like the acting? Are you looking forward to the next installments? We have one with John Boyega coming. We have the other one called Lover's Rock. So I can't wait to see what these hold, and hopefully I'll bring the next review to you guys a bit earlier. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you soon.